It's been a tough week for three of Scotland's best chefs. Double Michelin star Stevie McLaughlin. I'm cooking from the heart here. I'm not cooking for awards here. And unconventional Neil Rankin. I really want to get through to these finals. Went up against experienced Jacqueline O'Donnell. Do you know what, guys? Pink's not a colour, it's an attitude. For the chance to cook at a banquet commemorating the 70th anniversary of D-Day at the magnificent St Paul's Cathedral. Yesterday's dessert course saw Stevie march through. With a score of nine. Stevie, you'll be cooking again tomorrow. And Jacqueline beat Neil by just one point. How do you feel? Speechless. First time this week. <laughs> Today, Stevie and Jacqueline will fight it out. It's got me a wee bit worried. Anything I can do to get you worried today, Stevie, is surely a bonus. To impress the judges. It's um, clearly been a pretty tough battle. Let's see if it's going to continue today. Who want dishes worthy of war heroes. It is just wrong on all levels. This is divine. To ensure the dishes evoke the British spirit that helped win World War II, there's a fourth judge, D-Day veteran Jim Radford. What age were you? Fifteen. It's a sobering experience. You have to grow up very quickly. Today, only one chef will make it to the finals. And the winner is... Aprons on and both chefs are gearing up for the battle ahead. You make any changes? Made a couple of tweaks here and there. Better watch my tail then. You put up a good fight through the week. We're here for the judges' chamber. Let's do it for Scotland. The only one of us can go through. Could be me. Two Michelin starred chef Stevie began the week with a low scoring starter but went on to get a 10 for his main course. There's been much more pressure this week than I expected. I want to win this morning, and I want to be the one that's representing Scotland in the banquet. But with over 30 years of experience in the kitchen under her belt, Jacqueline won't be going down without a fight. I'm in the kitchen with a double Michelin star chef, Scotland's finest, but I'm still going to give him a run for his money. Stevie, watch out. Judges Prue Leith, Matthew Fort and Oliver Payton are getting a preview of the chef's menus. Well, it's been the battle of the Scottish chefs this week. And Stevie McLaughlin has two stars, and I rather like the look of his menu. I think Jacqueline might just surprise us. She is a really experienced chef, and I love the sound of her menu. It's just quite homely and rather witty. Listen, two new chefs, fresh blood. Let's hope we can get a Scottish chef to the banquet. Today, the judges will score each of the chefs four courses individually. Ah, well, our starry chef seems to be doing well, but didn't he start badly? Six for a starter. Shocking. Well, I think the difference between Jack and Stevie is the main course. It's um, clearly been a pretty tough battle. Let's see if it's going to continue today. Hi, guys. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Jackie, you've obviously had a very, very steady week. Good numbers. What's it like cooking with a Michelin two-star chef? It's been pretty tough, but I think I've risen to the challenge. Well, looking at those scores, you clearly have. She's been snapping at your heels all yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. Tough all week. But you had a 10 for your main course, but a starter, six. What went wonky there? It's firstly nerves. There is no place for nerves today. No, no. We are looking for spectacular food, and you've got to deliver it. Pretty scary, huh? <laughs> that really brought it home. Yes. Jacqueline's up first with her starter, not quite your mammy's liver and onions, a modern take on a homely old-fashioned favourite for which she scored eight points. Jeremy loved that dish, didn't he? Yeah, that's how I thought not too many changes. You're actually improving a good dish. It's got me a wee bit worried. Anything I can do to get you worried today, Stevie, is surely a bonus for me. 85-year-old World War II veteran Jim Radford writes folk songs about his D-Day experiences and he's here today to make sure the dishes tell a wartime story. Seat at the top table at last. At last, you've, <laughs> you've arrived. We've been waiting just for you. So, Jim, you were there on D-Day. I was, yes. I was uh, 
15-year-old galley boy on the rescue tug Empire Larch. We were building the Mulberry Harbour. That was our job, create the, the harbour on which the success of the invasion depended. I was just a kid. I didn't know the ropes were thrown at the deep end, as it were. You must have been the youngest lad on the D-Day landing. The normally vets don't find anybody younger than me. It's an amazing story. And what were your personal responsibilities? General dog's body. I cooked all the meals, I peeled all the spuds. Do you um, cook or do you like food? I do cook, yeah. I taught my wife to cook. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. So are you up to the task? Absolutely. I'm ready to eat for Britain. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> Jacqueline starts her serving pans with onion puree and tops with calves liver fried in butter, garlic and thyme followed by granola made from hazelnuts, pecans, seeds and paprika, and an onion twill garnish. I really need to impress them. I've came this far, stayed beside you, and now I need to go a bit further. You got me worried on this one, huh? But it's just liver and onions. But not like mummies. <laughs> Finally, Jacqueline places pots of cassis sauce on the side. Well done. Thank you. Oh, did you see much liver during the war? We did, yeah. Didn't look like this, though. I think not like the simplicity. The simplicity bit is me coming forward as a, a chef. That's what I like. I think the dish itself is extremely brave to cook something so simple. This is divine. The liver has been absolutely perfectly cooked. This is gourmet liver, this is... The crunchiness of the granola on top, I think is actually is a masterstroke. Jack, first dish in the judges' chamber. How does that make you feel? What are they saying? Do they like it? If this was to go through to the final, it's a big opening statement, where you think more of us the main course, almost. This is a great dish. Yes. I agree. The hero is the dish. Well, I wasn't thinking about where it goes on the menu. I just think of how it tastes. It tastes great. And your opinion is the most important opinion. Stevie's up next with his starter, Normandy 1944. Based on ingredients a D-Day soldier might have come across on his journey through France. With artichoke, cured ham and camembert mousse, it scored just six points during the week. So, Stevie, you made any changes today? Yeah, Jeremy said if you thought the portion size was big, I've got baby artichokes today, and I'm going to put a little bit less ham, cut it a little bit thinner, just try and get a little bit of lightness back into the dish. I thought the flavours in that, that dish were amazing. Stevie starts his plate with cured ham and wilted spinach. He drizzles with Calvados butter. Next, artichoke cups filled with mushroom ketchup, followed by Normandy camembert cream mousse and crispy onions. I'd love to eat that. That looks a lot more homely than the description sound. I think they'll love the fact that we've used all the ingredients that are from the north of France. I think it's rather an ingenious sort of acknowledgement of the French side of, of, of D-Day. All those sort of classic Norman ingredients. I don't really like it. I think I'm on the same line as Prue. It doesn't excite me. I mean, he's only doing it because he's trying to put Normandy ingredients together. It's a lot of French ingredients on a plate, which I don't really think work very well together. My story was through ingredients. Do you think they'll get the same story for you? Yeah, I think it's Normandy 1944. The first course has got to set the tone for the greatest meal that uh, veterans of D-Day would have eaten in their lives. And this ain't it. I'm, I'm sure it's well cooked, but I don't care for the ingredients. Listen, Jim, look on the bright side. It can only get better. <laughs> Fish course next? Yes. Let's go. Jacqueline's up first with her black market silver darlings, a dish based on a tale she heard about the rumoured illicit trading of herrings for whiskey in hay bales during the war. Although praised for telling a story on a plate, Jacqueline was marked down for under-seasoning and scored seven points. Jacqueline starts her plate with cucumber jelly. Different consistency? Yep, I've set it with a cold gelatine this time and wow. put it at the bottom. She prepares her herring tartare. Jack, are you happy with the seasoning? It's getting there. Super checking this time. She tops the cucumber jelly, 
followed by pickled cucumber. What's that you got there, Jack? Pickled cucumber. I've done a wee bit different this time. Uh -huh. Instead of curing it in the whiskey, I'm just going to let them drink the whiskey. Jacqueline puts the plates in her hay bale presentation and finishes the delicate parcels with herring encrusted in oatmeal. Finally, wee drams of whiskey go on the side. Let's go. That looks like a bale of straw to me. Hmm. It says then and now, and then on the other side, black market traded silver for gold. Ah, silver darlings being herrings. Yes. And gold being whiskey. I just wonder what the rate of exchange would be. <laughs> How much whiskey do you get for a herring? I hope that those wee tweaks that I made make all the difference. I think the jelly could be slightly more jelly-like. It's melting, isn't it? I think they'll get it. Good. I love that dish. I think what she's been is very clever is combine the background story with actually a pretty contemporary piece of cooking. I like it. It pleases me. It tastes good. <laughs> well, I noticed since you've had a hefty slug of whiskey, your mood seems to have improved immensely. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that always helps, yes. We up. Lifts the spirit and sharpens the wit. This is perfect for the fish course because it's small, it's light, it's delicious and it's memorable. I think it's very delicately balanced. I think the oatmeal and herring is very nice together and I think she's done a very nice job on it. Stevie's next with his fish course, Food to March On. A celebration of the seafood we have today served in a reproduction ration tin. A dish that scored him eight points earlier in the week. Stevie starts his tins with spicy tomato mousse, followed by aubergine puree, which he tops with crab meat, razor clams, and lemon and cumin cured mackerel. That's looking quite a wee bit different. Why did you change it? It's exactly the same ingredients, it's just a little bit prettier. I've had to top my game because of you. Stevie fills his tin with sea vegetables. Got your tweezers out there, Stevie. Is that you feeling at home? Make these eyebrows. <laughs> To finish his food to march on, he dresses with seaweed mustard. I like your presentation. Very you, Stevie. Pretty. Pretty. <laughs> and you've changed the board. Jeremy didn't like it. Well, I mean, it's a cover of a ration book on a tin. Should we have a look inside? Oh, isn't that That cute? is very pretty. You must love fish. Yeah, I do. My fish pies are famous. Are if you ever come round to my house, there's likely to be a fish pie on the menu. Are we all invited? We are all invited. Come round any time. There are a few supplies and flavours in there. A little yeah. bit of spice, just to bring it to life. I mean, it's a very sophisticated piece of modern cooking. Oh, that's lovely. It's really light and fresh. I would love to agree with you, Matthew, but I'm not going to, because I think it's an absolute car crash of a dish. There's loads and loads of very strong flavours here, but I expect to be able to taste the prime ingredients to the fish, and I can't. It's true I can't really taste the mackerel, but mixed all up together, I love it. Well, I have to say, it doesn't excite me. Do you think they'll get the story? Ration book goes down. It's quite the opposite of what you'd expect. It's a real celebration of things that they didn't have. I cannot see any real connection between the title and the dish. I agree with you. That's where he falls down. I think it's food to march away from. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. At the halfway point, while the chefs are preparing their main courses, the judges are discussing their scores so far. Do you know, guys, I am so thrilled with this morning because I just am delighted with what Jack has done. But, you know, Stevie will come romping back. I have given a 10, but there have also been some disappointing bits, and I've given a 5. I'm not anywhere near a 10, actually. I'm a high on an 8 and 5 on a low. But don't forget that Jeremy gave Stevie 10 for his main course, which was Beef Wellington. I love Beef Wellington, but it's the wrong man at the wrong place, wrong battle. <laughs> Stevie's Beef Wellington is part of a dish inspired by the fantasy dinner of a young soldier at war. Also featuring Woolton vegetable pie, this dish pushed him out in front earlier in the week. And you're my first ever ten. Took the words right out of my mouth.
Phoebe's Walton vegetable pie, named after the then Minister of Food, is made to an authentic wartime recipe. He tops with lard and potato pastry. And with the clock ticking, he assembles his beef wellington. He spreads chicken and mushroom mousse over pancakes. This was the one that got you the 10 with Jeremy? It's also the one I was most worrying about as well, all, all my dishes. Stevie adds fillet of beef wrapped in spinach before encasing in puff pastry and placing in the oven. There's absolutely no hope that I want to go home today. We're going to fight this out to the end, aren't we, Stevie? We're going to fight this one on the beaches. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Hello. Lovely to meet you. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Glad to know you. Welcome. So, you were actually there? I was there. What age were you? Fifteen. I was fifteen years old. It's a sobering experience. You had to grow up very quickly. Have you been back since? I didn't go back for about 30 years, and then I went back, and uh, I was very moved when I went back and was on the beach where I'd seen all these dead bodies, and now there's little kids playing bloody sandcastles, and I see the change that there was. Change for the better. Yeah. How's it going in the judges' chamber? There's been highs and lows, and uh, there's at least one ten I know of. It's interesting. Good luck, both of you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. What a story, Jack, yeah? And I think that's why it's been such a, a tough brief. Yeah. These guys are what we're doing this for. Stevie gets back to meticulously monitoring the temperature of his beef wellington. You've been checking that but five times. Everything OK? Just hit home how important this is. I just want to make sure it's absolutely perfect. He brings out his Wilton vegetable pie and serves it in a special wartime parcel presentation. Finally happy, he serves his beef wellington, pours his red wine gravy, and his dream soldier's parcel is complete with a wartime-inspired letter from home. Thank you. How do you feel? Relief. It's up to the judges now. Wow. It's like, like an ammunition chase. <gasps> Look at that. That is absolutely splendid. Letter from home. Dearest son, we can only hope that this parcel somehow reaches you safely. We send this parcel to remind you that you're in our thoughts every hour of every day. May your dreams of home keep you strong through these dark days until you are returned safely to us. Love, Mum and Dad. When they cut it open, if it's as I want it, I think I'll love it. Wow. I must say, that beef is perfect colour. The quality of the flavour in that fillet is just melting your mouth. It looks good, it tastes good. The perfection as you can get. The Wilton pie, I've not changed a single thing. It's an authentic recipe of the time. The Wilton pie was not exactly a good cuisine. And actually, I think it tastes absolutely delicious. Two dishes with pastry on it. Do you think that's too much? No, not at all. I think it's the young soldier's fantasy food. I think that to have two lots of pastry is probably unnecessary. This is one of Churchill's favourite dishes. Uh, do, do we have a winner on our hands here? It's pretty good. Don't mind commenting on that, Oliver? Yes. <laughs> uh, I give it more than two. <laughs> <laughs> Jacqueline's next with her main course, a homecoming platter for the D-Day soldiers, which was criticised for being over-seasoned with too many side dishes. Jeremy suggested there was too much going on around the board, so I've cut down on one of the potatoes and one of the cabbage dishes. Half the dish. So I have, I've half the dish, yeah. Jacqueline stirs cream into her ham and savoy cabbage and serves it in mess tins. She brings out her apple and potato gratin and pork crackling. She slices her cured pork shoulder and adds roast pork cutlets and finally pours parsley cream sauce into jugs. We're done. Yikes. Wow, that looks good, doesn't it? Oh. Whoa. You think what you changed, the judges will see that as an improvement? I'm not sure they would have liked just so much going on. 
The word heart-stopping springs to mind at this moment. I just think this is passionate cooking. Each thing is in itself is just a thing of great beauty, isn't it? The shoulder through the week, Jackie, was salty. How is it today? It's much better. I actually think the baconing of the shoulder really unbearably salty. While it is all of those things you say, Oliver, and it's passionate, and it's warm, and it's heartfelt, and it's heart-stopping. It is absolutely overwhelmingly rich. I think it's a bit rich for me. Oh. You're all going soft. Sorry about that. And I think, if I'm absolutely honest, I mean, the crackling's too salty, too. Oh. I think really well done to her. She's shown a lot of passion, but it is not a banquet dish. I could need a lot of this. Jim, what I think you need is another campaign medal added to those, having survived <laughs> the homecoming platter. <laughs> With just one course to go, it's Stevie who's plating up first. That's us, Jack, nearly over the line. We're nearly there. Come on. Stevie's dessert is a tribute to Winston Churchill. A chocolate-coated parfait V for victory hand sign and signature cigar filled with bitter chocolate cream, which Jeremy gave nine points. Stevie starts his first plate with Union Jack bunting. You're changing things again. Just flying the flag. He starts his second plate with a hazelnut, white chocolate and coconut crumb. Adds crushed dried raspberry and poppy seeds. Finally, chocolate cigars and chocolate V for victory parfaits. Wow. <laughs> a little V for victory. And they eat a chili and cigar to go with it. It reminds you of Winston Churchill, it reminds you of the victory of the war, and it reminds you of why we're here. Mmm, mmm, mmm! It says something about the sort of creamy softness of this parfait that... It's seduced. Actually, I love the cigar. Really beautiful quality chocolate, isn't it? Well, one of you gastronomes, please tell me what the stuff is that makes this perfect ash. Poppy seeds, and then you've got dried raspberry. I would have poured a drop of rum over it myself. I think you're a bit of a connoisseur, on the quiet. I tend to pour rum over any sweets I do. <laughs> Very popular <laughs> sweet on the toast was we had big sacks of American dried apricots. Cook them up, throw sugar in it, and custard. And if we had any rum, we'd pour rum on that. That sounds really delicious. Final dish, Stevie. How do you feel? I feel very good. I feel great it's done. I feel I've done a good job. I'm a happy man. There's a real level of skill involved in this, and I think it's really beautiful. It's perfect for the banquet. It's not the most brilliant, dazzling, original piece of gastronomy we have ever been faced with. No. But it is clearly a chef who has enormous technical ability. Jacqueline's final dish is a white chocolate candle of remembrance in honour of those who didn't return from D-Day. Jeremy Lee was impressed and awarded Jacqueline an eight, despite finding some elements too sweet. Oh, oh. Broke one. That's okay, Jack. Yeah, I just broke a candle. Luckily for Jacqueline, all is not lost. Thankfully, I had a spare one. Once the candles are secured, she adds lemon curd, followed by ginger wine jelly, spiced gingerbread, and lemon mousse. Imagine doing this for a banquet. Hopefully, we'd be allowed some help. She finishes her candle with a white chocolate wax effect and finally a wick. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I'm told we have to pull the wicks out now. What do you think? They'll get it. I think they'll like everything, and I think they'll get everything. I think there's a tremendous amount of ingenuity and, indeed, good deal of modelling skill have got into these. I know there's little dribbles of, uh, like, wax down the side. I think they'll like the flavours. They're of that time. don't like white chocolate very much. The jelly side of it is so acidic. I think it's delicious. I think it's got some wonderful flavours in it. I think lemon and ginger together are terrific. I think the jelly is delicious. I wanted to finish today on let's stop and think about the ones that didn't make it. And I hope that they get that feeling. I think that the idea of Candle of Remembrance, which you then sort of knock down and eat, just seems to be bizarre. 
the chocolate isn't great and there's something uncomfortable about the candle of remembrance then being gobbled up. My main objection is I just don't like the taste of it. It is just wrong on all levels. It is not to be remembered. So, who's going through? Close one, I think. It's hard to think that one of us won't go through because we've just gave it our all. Well, I've had a great day. I've, I've dined well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had three dishes that I will remember for a long time. What to me has been amazing about the day is at half time, Jack was well ahead, but Stevie comes storming back. So now I don't know quite where we are. Welcome, chefs. Today has been a really mixed bag. We've given three tens. Also, I'm sorry to say, I gave one of the lowest scores that I've ever given in any great British menu competition. When we added up all the scores, in the end, it could not have been closer. There was only one point in it. The winner has won by the skin of their teeth. And the winner is... Jack. <gasps> well done. Oh, my goodness, thank you so much. Brilliant. I'm so surprised. How do you feel? Gobsmacked. Stevie, how do you feel about it? Gutted, very disappointed, but not disappointed to lose to Jack. She's been really tough this week, and, uh, yeah, she's done, done well and deserves a place. Jack, we all loved your herring dish. That was one of the standout dishes of the day. It was brilliant. I thought the combination of flavours was fantastic, the texture was terrific, the concept was amusing, and I gave it a ten. <laughs> Thank you. Jack, if there's one dish you really have to do something about, it was the candle dish. I'm afraid that was disastrous. I was the only person who liked it, and I only liked the filling. It almost cost you the competition. Stevie, you are Wellington. When that came down and sat there, I was salivating. Very rarely do we polish our food and want more, but that was one of those dishes. It was absolutely perfection. I gave it a 10. Thank you. Thank you very much. I dubbed the beef Wellington too, and I gave it a 10. Star dish, from my perspective. Thank you. Stevie, profound commiserations for that. She just cooked a blind today. Tough competition this week. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> well deserved. But she's a fighter, Jack, and she did a brilliant job. Just doing that for the veterans. I put my heart and soul into something that they really fought for. She did a brilliant job. She really cooked from the heart, cooked amazing food. It means so much to me. After a great week. <sighs> a great day. I'm pleased to see all you experts agree with me on so many things. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. Thank you. If I was going to get beat, I'm glad I get beat by somebody like you. Oh, thank you so much. Well done. Folk singer Jim comes back into the kitchen for a special farewell. Before I go, I'm going to sing you a song. It was inspired by my experience in Normandy. In the cold grey light of the 6th of June In the year of 44 I little thought when I left home of the dreadful sights I'd see But I came to manhood on the day That I first saw Normandy As the years pass by I can still recall The men I saw that day Remember those who made it so On the shores of Normandy That was fantastic. Cheers. Cheers.